Good evening, good evening, and welcome to another live show on the Montgomery Heart and Wellness uh, YouTube channel. It's been a while since I've gone um, live. We are actually in the process of <clears throat> restructuring the channel. Uh, many of you are familiar with the Fresh Natural Live show, and I'll be talking about um, the return of Fresh Natural Live. It'll actually uh, show up on our private channel, the Optimal Health uh, Journey channel. But tonight, uh, I'm very pleased to bring to you uh, our docu series. Uh, we will we have released our docu series, Heart and Soul of a Champion. And what I want to do is give you some insight as to what the docu series is about, uh, the motivation behind the docu series, and um, a lot of other information. So I want you to stay tuned. We're going to get started right now. Hey, welcome back. Welcome back. So you just heard the uh, part of the theme song, the part and soul of the champion. Uh, and um, I'll talk a little bit about that later on. What I want to do is talk about the docu series and give you some insight. Uh, many of you uh, who are with us in the chat room uh, may have uh, actually ordered it. Uh, it is available. I'll share the uh, website with you. You can go and purchase the docu series now. This is season one. There are eight episodes in season one, and the um, topic uh, for season one of the theme, I should say, is Athletes Edition. We're already in production of season two, and I'll be sharing uh, some details of season two with you. <clears throat> uh, tonight, I'll even share uh, a little bit of uh, information about some of the clips uh, behind um, season one and, and some of the things that went into the story, some behind the scenes uh, uh, caption. But what I want to do first and foremost is share a few comments about the whole concept behind Heart and Soul of a Champion. Many of you are familiar with a lot of documentaries and, and the documentaries on health. Uh, there are many vegan documentaries that were excellently done, Game Changers, uh, What the Health, uh, and many others, uh, Forks Over Knives, and these are excellent documentaries and they show the benefit of plant-based nutrition. And uh, many of you know, I'm a cardiologist who utilized plant-based nutrition in my practice. But Heart and Soul of the Champion um, goes beyond uh, just um, utilizing plant-based nutrition, but rather we have brought together this concept of integrative health. And what I wanna do is share a few slides with you and give you some insight into my thinking behind uh, what the future of medicine should be. Uh, the importance of that is that <clears throat> Heart and Soul of the Champion uh, underscores what that vision is. So essentially what we're doing with Heart and Soul of the Champion is we're pulling the curtains back behind our operators at Montgomery Heart and Wellness, and we're bringing a film team in to document the journeys of individuals, everyday individuals who come to our center who battle chronic illness of different types. And it shows you the ups and downs, the insights. So it's not just a matter of saying, well, you know, if you eat this diet, uh, some great things will happen. Here's the person before, here's the person after, isn't this wonderful? No, we're gonna show you step-by-step step the processes that we um, uh, go through with patients. Uh, we're gonna give you insight in terms of our thinking uh, we're going to show some challenges that we go through, triumphs, uh, there's some, you know, missteps and the like. So we're going to show you the nuts and bolts of how a medical practice operates, how Montgomery Heart and Wellness operates on a day-to-day -day basis, how we integrate allopathic medicine with nutrition, with other types of natural interventions, and how this comes together. So this gives the viewer the unique view of how that works. But first of all, let me uh, share with you some thoughts. And as I bring my slides up, I want you to hit the thumbs up, uh, like, and share. Uh, and if you haven't had a chance to subscribe to the channel, please do so. 
So what is this concept of integrative health? Well, uh, integrative health is my vision of what I think the future of medicine should be. So why should integrative health be the future? Currently we're in a healthcare crisis. I've shown this slide uh, a number of times and talked I've done this year, uh, and I plan to travel across the country and do presentations. But this slide shows life expectancy of the United States from, 2000, from 1995 up to around 2014, there was an increase. Around 2014, there was a slight decline here. Uh, and you get to 2019, there was a first of two nosedives. From 2019 to 2020, first nosedive. So 2020 and 2021, second nosedive. So a huge you know, drop in life expectancy. Uh, and so, you know, why is this not surprising? Well, it's not surprising because we've long become accustomed to sickness. Uh, sickness is the norm. Uh, looking at cardiovascular disease in particular, because I'm a cardiologist, I pay a lot of attention to cardiovascular disease. In 2019, we had about 874,000 deaths. Uh, and to put this in perspective, we just you know recently went through a horrific pandemic uh, the COVID pandemic, and that caused about 6.7 million deaths globally. However, it was just barely more than a third of the deaths uh, from cardiovascular disease, which is 19.05 million global deaths. So these number of deaths happen from cardiovascular disease every year, uh, and it dwarfed one of the most horrific pandemics uh, that we've had in a long time. So what are the causes, coronary heart disease, other causes of cardiovascular disease, stroke, high blood pressure, heart failure, and other diseases of the arteries, which you're familiar with? Uh, what is the cost? Um, if you look at this slide, <clears throat> we show the number of military deaths that's been suffered in the United States from 1775 to 2022. And you see here the American Civil War, over 600,000 deaths and over 400,000 deaths in World War II and so on. If you were to take all of those deaths from American soldiers that we've lost in every war that we fought uh, in the United States in our, in our military history, you come up with a number of approximately 1.3 million. Uh, if you take all the deaths from cardiovascular disease and cancer combined, you would come up with about 1.4 million deaths every year from these two top two causes of death in the United States. So in other words, cardiovascular disease and cancer combined cause more deaths each year than all the military deaths we've uh, suffered in the history of the United States. That happens every year. So that's a pretty drastic number. And that doesn't include other causes of chronic illness, which brings it even higher. So as I said before, we've had a recent drastic reduction in life expectancy in the United States. Uh, it's roughly 2.7 years from 2019 to 2021. And six out of 10 US citizens uh, suffer from at least one chronic illness. And we spend about eight, $3.8 trillion, roughly 20% of our gross domestic product each year on sick care. And despite that expenditure, uh, we only get sicker. So um, we need a paradigm shift, needless to say. Uh, and that paradigm shift is simply a lifestyle intervention. And it's my opinion, and this is an opinion that's based on our scientific data and our uh, greater than two decades of clinical experience, is that a lifestyle intervention should be the first line treatment of choice, not only for the prevention, but also for the control and reversal of chronic illnesses. Uh, I would argue both communicable and non-communicable diseases. So lifestyle intervention is a very important intervention and should be used and we we use it on a routine basis. So what is our paradigm shift in essence? Uh, we use integrative health, whether the patient's acutely ill in the hospital, you know, we'll apply a nutritional detox diet in addition to other hospital medical therapies they're getting, if they're planning for surgery that they may need, we may detox them before surgery. Uh, we may detox them, wean them from medications or detox them 
or apply some other intervention to help them avoid surgery. So there are many different, many different approaches uh, in terms of using uh, uh, an intervention, a, a, a lifestyle intervention. For example, a patient a number of years ago had a cardiac arrest in our lobby. Uh, we resuscitated the patient. We did CPR. We shocked him out of ventricular fibrillation. Uh, he came to, the paramedics came, got him, we, we rushed him to the hospital, did a coronary angiogram. Uh, while in the hospital, put him on a raw detox diet, uh, adjusted his medications. You know, his heart failure got better with those things. Uh, we implanted a defibrillator and an outpatient. We put him, continued him on the detox diet and other lifestyle interventions. So this is an approach that, that plays a role at every stage of the therapeutic uh, intervention. So integrated health starts with the foundation of optimal nutrition. Uh, this allows for natural healing. And then other natural interventions are added as tolerated. My little pyramid here shows a defined food prescription nutritional intervention at the fundamental, at the base, the foundation, target nutrient supplementation, fitness assessment, physiological and functional cor uh, correction, and of course, fine tuning all of the interventions and, 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 and coordinating together. Many people, they'll you know, maybe take supplements or you know, eat a diet, exercise, they do these things sporadically. Our intervention puts them together and, and uh, creates a synergistic effect, which optimizes the effect of uh, each uh, therapy. So uh, an overview, um, heart and soul of the champion represents this centerpiece. So we have a heart and soul of the champion intervention, which is uh, the title of one of our integrative health programs. But heart and soul of the champion is also the title of the DACA series, which we'll be talking about today. And it's going to show you to a certain extent how we integrate all of these uh, different approaches. And as you order Heart and Soul of the Champion, uh, I'll make you aware of a website. I'll share that with you. Uh, and um, this is the first season. You can go to uh, the uh, uh, YouTube show there, and I'll, I'll put some links in the uh, chat room as well. So anyway, uh, I wanted to share that with you and give you the insight. So let's get into Heart and Soul of the Champions. As I said, uh, season one's Athletes Edition, and we started off uh, in episode one, introducing all of the athletes who came uh, to our center. And we had athletes, but we also had some individuals who were not athletes who we featured in season one. Uh, and we showed how they went through the whole process. First and foremost, I want to share with you uh, the approach I took. Um, and let's take a look at a clip from Heart and Soul. And um, I'll talk about uh, this approach. So this is uh, at the very beginning of episode one of Heart and Soul, the champion. And I'll share with you uh, some of the things that we talk about and uh, the approach here. This look. Over the 25 years of practicing cardiology and internal medicine, I've treated patients with many, many advanced diseases. Following these patients, despite the advancement of technology that we've had, the patients continue to get sicker and sicker. In my busy practice, my health started to decline. I started noticing that my cholesterol went up, my blood pressure was up, and I did not want to take the same therapies I was prescribing other patients. So there you have it. Uh, that last line is very telling. Uh, many of you know my story. Those of you who don't, um, as a busy cardiologist, I work many hours. Uh, and you know my practice is over 25 years old now, and, and I went through many years of training, and I, I opened my practice right out of training. Uh, and it was just a process of you know having uh, privileges at probably 11 different hospitals here in the Houston area. Uh, I worked hard, taking emergency room calls, seeing patients in the middle of the night. Uh, routine days were about 16 hours easily. Uh, Saturdays and Sundays were you know, abbreviated days, probably 12 hours easily. 
Uh, I did procedures most days of the week. Uh, and it was just a grind. It was just a nonstop grind. And, you know, that was, you know, running a medical business, you know, starting a family, those things just took its toll. And my health uh, started to decline. And uh, in the context of that, it's most my cholesterol was up, weight was up, blood pressure. Uh, and as I clearly point out in, in that first clip, I did not want to take the medications or other therapies that I prescribed. Now, again, uh, my mindset then was different than now. It wasn't, you know, as, you know, as focused on natural interventions then, but I clearly knew that medications had side effects and medical treatments had side effects. So even though I recommended them and, um, and again, believed in them, I thought they were very effective. I wanted to do something different. So I did my own research and, um, I started to utilize something different for myself. And so my research led me toward nutrition and optimal nutrition. As I read more and more books, uh, the underlying, you know, uh, uh, definition of optimal nutrition with plant foods. And if you look at any healthy diet, whether it's the, you know, whatever keto diet or whatever, they all have plant foods. And so I got into the whole process of, uh, doing a detox, uh, and it made a big, big impact on my life uh a huge impact now there was another motivating factor and also as i go on i want uh to invite any and all of you to ask questions uh any questions you you may uh want to ask about the docket series anything you want me to answer uh if i'm not able to answer um it tonight we'll certainly uh, maybe answer in future uh, uh presentations uh, so feel free to ask questions. I'll be looking at the chat, those of you in the chat. And hello to everybody. I'm going to uh, give you a shout out. I see Carol, Carol, and Dolores McClain. I know Cindy Goodson's in, and uh, Brian Spragans, and, and a lot of uh, Mella's in. So a lot of uh, people who are our usual uh, followers are in. Let me uh, go to this next clip, which then takes you through uh, a natural progression. So here we are in, still in season one, uh, and we give you some more insight in terms of the background of why we do what we do. I'm Dr. Baxter Montgomery, and I've been practicing the world's largest medical center for more than a quarter of a century. Our center is quite unique. The Montgomery Heart and Wellness Center is located here in Houston, Texas. We have state-of-the-art diagnostic and therapeutic tools. I have a background in biochemistry. I have medical specialties in internal medicine, cardiovascular disease, and cardiac electrophysiology. So here we're setting up, okay, we're, who are we, where are we, um, you know, what's this all about? Uh, and this is the beginning of us telling our story as a medical business. You know, we're here in Houston, we're in the shadows of the world's largest medical center, uh, and we're doing something uh, pretty much off the beaten path. You know, oftentimes in my talks, I usually refer to as the Texas Medical Center as, you know, uh, Goliath. Uh, and uh, we are referred to our center as, you know, David. We're much smaller. Uh, however, I think we have something that's very, very powerful. Uh, and uh, this doctor series represents the beginning uh, or the announcement, if you will, of the things that we're doing and it's showcasing some of the powerful effects of uh, our approach. And so, you know, this again, sets the context. So it's episode, you know, one gives you some background, my background, our background, later on I'll talk about, you know, family members and loved ones and how it's affected uh, my approach to things. And uh, we talk about how these things uh, work. So um, again, we're setting things up uh let's see i'm delighted to see this shift uh thanks for all the wonderful comments love these ideas uh you guys have all the answers let's see here uh let's see uh doc will be on chef aj this thursday at 4 p.m central time yep i'll be on chef aj well if uh, if you go on chef aj's uh channel 
I will be on Chef AJ and we will look at episode one and two, uh, perhaps in its entirety. So um, uh, we will certainly do that. This is a life changing industry transformation. Yes, I saw that and hope to watch. Yes, Norma. Uh, and so Jane, I see no question yet. You guys have all, okay, thank you for doing this. Is there any chance you're looking at training hospitals in other parts of the country like South Carolina? to further expand the impact of your approach, badly needed. You know, um, the hope with this docu-series is that this message will spread. Um, we hope to spread this message in the hearts and minds of everyday citizens. So what I want all of you to do, I would love for you all to actually uh, spread uh, this. So heart and soul of a and I'm actually gonna put it in the banner uh, that you can actually go and spread this website. So heartandsoulofachampion.com. I'm going to put, uh, and so you can actually go and share this and I'll share some other, uh, uh, information with you, but, um, share this information with loved ones, friends, uh, also, individuals can purchase it. You can uh, purchase, um, if you go to our website, it allows you to purchase uh, an episode. But share this with loved ones and friends uh, and family members. You can also purchase as a gift. Um, and um, so there's a lot that you can do. Um, and I'll share the uh, purchase website with you. And here is the purchase website. Heart and Soul of a Champion, and you can also watch it, go here, you can purchase it. On this website, you can go and see episode one for free by just giving your name and your email address. Uh, and you can also um, look at the trader on the website. So that gives you much more information. So as we go uh, through uh, the episodes where we talk about our background, we talk about our story, uh, but now we start to introduce some of the um, approach. I have a hypothesis that this innovation. Oops, cutting myself off. I start to give you my theory here in terms of why we're doing this, because uh, let me share this slide with you and I'll explain it in a little bit more detail. I have a hypothesis that this intervention is even more powerful than that. This intervention, I think, can get people back to peak levels of performance. So this intervention, I think, can get people back to peak level of performance. So what are we doing with these athletes? We've had athletes here who haven't competed in 20 years. Now, this part may sound a little crazy. Our goal is actually to show or demonstrate that we can get these athletes back to peak levels of performance. We have a Hall of Famer. We have a number of other people. In, and they are battling chronic illnesses. So the goal is to get them over the chronic illnesses and get them to a point where they can function at or near their peak level when they're in their 20s and 30s. Now that sounds crazy. However, I'll share some insight with you. We have many older patients who are debilitated, bedridden, on wheelchair in wheelchairs on walkers who've never you know competed at a peak level and we get them to a point where they're walking and jogging um a patient of mine who had severe you know coronary disease was on medication had bad you know uh, chest pain he was never an elite athlete uh he would have chest pain with walking just half a block uh, however in our detox program, he's now able to do 60 push-ups holding his breath. Uh, you know, so we have people who are everyday citizens who are getting to high levels of performance. So individuals who were at one point at high level of performance, I think that you know physiology is still there. We just have to scrape off the chronic illnesses, scrape off the inflammation, scrape off the oxidative stress, and help the body revitalize itself. That's an important thing that we're looking at because if an athlete can get back to their prime, 
How about a lawyer who is very brilliant, who's having early cognitive decline, a person who is an excellent school teacher, a person who was an excellent uh, pianist, a musician of some type, uh, other type, uh, can they get back to their prime? And I think the answer is yes. This would be an important finding because then it's going to change our mindset in terms of how we age in our expectations of ourselves as we age. We should actually be getting better, not declining. And we are the mindset that we're declining physiologically. Um, I remember going to a conference and one of the speakers talked about how uh, he read research where you know, uh, humans should be peaking at the age of seven. Uh, and, and it seems like an outlandish idea, but I don't think it's so outlandish at all. So uh, this is one of the things we're going to share with you. And this is part of the motivation for doing this. Now, um, let me share a few of the clips. And um... so we brought together a group of athletes who had performed at peak levels at some time in their lives. And we're going to work with these athletes, despite the fact that they're coming in with chronic ailments such as high blood pressure, heart failure, arthritis, and many other chronic illnesses. It is our impression that this intervention not only will help their bodies reverse these chronic illnesses, but it will also help their body get back to a level of peak performance. If you can go back and turn the clock, Go back to a time where you were at your peak performance. Would you do that? This is Heart and Soul of a Champion, Athletes Edition, Season 1. So this clearly spells out our approach uh, in Season 1. We bring and introduce these athletes. We give you the background uh, in terms of what's happening um, in, uh, in Season 2. Uh, we show exactly how we operate. Here's a clip that shows me meeting with my clinical team. Let me share this with you. Let's look at Mr. Green's stress test. On his stress test, he had good functional capacity, he went for a good period of time. So here's a little snippet that shows, you know, how we work. And basically, you know, we evaluate the patients, I have a team, I have, you know, medical assistants, I have technicians, I have mid-levels. And, you know, we're evaluating lots of patients with lots of complex illnesses. We're capturing a lot of data. Our center, as a, as a state, is state of the art. We're able to do detailed evaluations, get detailed blood analyses and the like. And so there's a lot of data that we're putting together. There's a lot of information. So, yes, we have patients who are very ill, uh, but we have a very intricate process uh, that we use to evaluate how well these patients are doing. Uh, sometimes we have to uh, admit patients to the hospital and, and evaluate them there while, you know, uh, implementing a detox. Most of the times we manage patients in our center. Uh, and so we walk through this whole process. So not only the medical side, but the natural integ integrative part side, but our sauna therapy and, 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 and ozone therapy, all these other unique state-of-the-art therapies, both on the allopathic and integrative side. Uh, we show you the uh, fitness aspects of things. And, and in episode two, I, I share a little bit more of my motivation. And let me show you this clip. Unlike the typical story that doctors say, well, I went into medicine for this reason or that reason, my story started really after I was into medicine and how I've managed the care of my mother. But knowing how the best that the world's largest medical center could offer had nothing to offer her, and in fact, may have contributed to some of the problems that she had. This really changed the perspective and the focus of my practice from this point on. And so you can essentially say that my mother taught me one of the most important lessons of my career. If you really want to get inside the modern Dr. Montgomery and, and look at, uh, understand uh, the core of my motivation, talk, talk about myself in the third person, uh, you know, definitely look at episode two. Uh, not only gets you into that core uh, essence, uh, but we start to break down a lot of the details of what's happening with the patients, the, our, our athletes, whom we introduce 
in uh, episode one. So episode two, we start to get into the nitty gritty. Uh, and also in episode two, we introduce another very key person uh, in the uh, event who actually traveled very far uh, to seek our help. Essentially, the illnesses that Mr. Banks, Green, Mosley, and Wadi are dealing with kill more people every year in the United States than all the deaths that we've lost from American soldiers in United States history. Actually, that slide talks about the whole uh, perspective of these illnesses. Uh, and as I pointed out in my PowerPoint, it gives you insight in terms of what we're dealing with. So we're looking at you know four individuals who have chronic illnesses, but the chronic illnesses these individual, individuals are dealing with, you know, represents the deaths, um, uh, the illnesses that cause more deaths every year than we've lost American soldiers uh, in the history of our war, as I pointed out. Um, well, even though we're out of shape, I mean, I'm sorry, in episode three, my, I have a little itchy trigger finger here. In episode three, we go into some of the workouts uh, very early on. Uh, there's some light moments in terms of seeing how these athletes, you know, get into uh, the throws of starting their workouts. Well, even though we're out of shape, I mean, we, we worked. I yeah. mean, look yeah. at it. We worked. Yeah, we the warm up got you out of breath. So we so definitely, yeah. <laughs> you're right. I'm, I'm going to trust you on that. Yeah. I definitely, at, at my age, and I've been doing that in a couple of years, it's important to stress these things. We both can't be wrong because, man, his time was right. not. Yeah, it, because if hey, he hey, stepped don't worry on about it, him. By, by the time you're stepping on it, We're, this is it's my going time, a whole not second over. Oh, what time you get? He didn't even run. I had 559, five, he had 544. Five, four, four, so we were close. He understands. Five, four, four, okay. Yeah. What when did y'all shave my time down to? <laughs> so you see a bunch of guys who, I don't want to say old guys, but guys certainly beyond our, our so called prime, and we're still you know, uh, fussing about a time. So a lot of light moments in that. But but the point uh, I want to point out, the point I want to make there is that th this is all serious stuff to us. And uh, these are guys who are athletes who are, are serious about their time. Uh, you notice me out there running. I do want to point out, you know, this is a disclaimer. I was running with uh, some micro uh, tears in my hamstring. And so that's why I was pretty stiff and slow. Just want to let you know that. Uh, but you'll see other videos of me in perhaps future uh, seasons, perhaps, uh, uh, performing better. The last clip I want to uh, share with you, um, let's see, we may have, let me see. What is in dealing with Mr. Wadi's case, I'm reminded of how common heart failure is. Another individual we were asked to evaluate during this time is an individual named Mr. Antonio Pope. Mr. Pope is a 67-year-old man who flew in from Virginia, and he was diagnosed with congestive heart failure. He was told that his heart was beating at 10%. His sisters accompanied him to the visit. I said, I've gone on Facebook, I've gone on Instagram, and I've seen Dr. Baxter Montgomery talk about what he has done for people. We gotta leave Virginia. Because even Virginia had given up on him. We had three hospitals in Virginia to say no. So what I want to outline here is that every day we are faced with people in dire straits. We're faced with people who, you know, see us from all over the country. We actually have some international patients who are on their last leg and they fly into Houston. And, you know, they, you know, you know they've been given up by the standard uh, medical therapy and oftentimes they're very, very far advanced in their illness. And, you know, we are challenged with these uh, types of conditions all the time. And we'll share this with you as well. So, but a part of what I wanted to share with that clip is that, you know, it's, it's not, you know, all the better roses for us. We're constantly challenged over and over again with individuals who are coming in and not only to have heart failure, they have kidney failure, they have liver failure, uh, and they have a myriad of, of, of illnesses. Uh, and, and we show you how we address these patients 
uh, who are in dire straits. And, and this is one example that you will see uh, in uh, season one as we go through and, and work with this particular patient who was given up by you know, multiple institutions uh, and, and made it to us. Uh, the last clip I want to share with you just gives you a little bit of uh, insight into um, another part of episode three. The detox meal plans are well-designed, selected meals that we've put together for our patients. We have anywhere from a seven-day detox meal plan to a 20-day detox meal plan. We've had some individuals do a three-month detox programs or even longer. And the nutritional value of these meal plans, I think, are in a major way twofold. One, by consuming these foods, at the same time, the person removing the toxic and disease-promoting foods that they normally consume in the standard American diet. And two, these foods are packed with super nutrients and antioxidants that helps the body heal itself. So it has a very powerful impact on a wide variety of disease states. The types of entrees in the meal plans vary from the beverages, which starts off with the superfood water, simple water, then can go to smoothies. We have simple salads. We have complex salads that have things like dates or olives or sprouts. We procure veggies either from local organic producers or local growers that are sustainable growers. And these foods are mixed together for salads. So uh, Danielle says the food looks delicious. Thanks, Danielle. You know, it's really uh, our intention to actually show the food. So. You know, the nutritional intervention is one of the interventions, and we spend a fair amount of time talking about exactly what the nutritional regimen is in addition to uh, the other therapies. We go into the mechanisms of how these therapies work. Uh, we share a little bit of the science. We share uh, the clinical data on, on the subjects, the before and after data. So the, the docket series, as it goes through uh, season one, carries you through the journey of all the participants uh, through this intervention. Uh, and we inform you, uh, hopefully we'll inspire you, but also our goal is to entertain you while doing all of the above. But more importantly, we want to give you insight. We want to give the audience insight in terms of how uh, this approach works and let you see the nuts and bolts. And so uh, a number of questions came up as I glance. Uh, uh, Metal, Dr. Uh, Wickling Scott uh, asked about young people. Can we promote healthy aging among youth? How does Heart and Soul uh, fit in this age group? Uh, Heart and Soul the Champion fits very well in, the, in young people, and, and we will probably have a season that deals with young people. So stay tuned. Season two is dealing with chronic illness in women. Uh, I'll tell you more about that over the coming months of this year. Uh, but uh, we will have each season will have a different theme, even though there will be some overlap. The other thing is that individuals who are in one season may reappear in another season, showing uh, where they are in their journey. So uh, there's a lot uh, to be unpacked here. Uh, Brian Spragans, I'm hoping that this lifestyle change can also help chronic kidney disease. Uh, we will have some people um, that we will share some information about their chronic kidney disease, not only this season, but the future season. In fact, we may have uh, a season that deals with chronic kidney disease. So that's a great question. Uh, food looks good. Everybody likes the food, truly inspired. Uh, go to heartandsoulofachampion.com. Uh, it's not only is it on the screen, but it's also, uh, the link is also in the uh, notes. Uh, please share uh, this uh, presentation. Uh, also give us a thumbs up. Uh, I see only one thumbs up, give us more thumbs up. So this can be spread out uh, based on the YouTube algorithm. Uh, again, any questions you have, whether you're on live or you ask questions in the recording, uh, we will be watching this and uh, we will address those questions. And some of those questions may be addressed in a follow-up uh, YouTube presentation. So 
Uh, I hope this was uh, insightful. I'm really, really excited about uh, season one of Heart and Soul of a Champion. I hope each and every one of you uh, go order it and look at it and share it with friends, family, loved ones. Uh, we uh, are trying to be independent, at least right now, as we share this. Uh, and um, we will be working with uh, a lot of you uh, as uh, over the years in terms of sharing this information. Many of you are uh, part and parcel to our inner circle who will be working with us. But if you have any questions, again, leave them in the chat. Uh, and we will be looking at it and we'll address your questions over time. So until next time, uh, I want you guys to keep it, as I used to say, keep it fresh, natural, and live. Uh, but also this time I want you to think about revitalizing the champion in you. See you later. That's the heart of the champion. You revitalize the heart and soul of a champion. Yeah. That's how you take the proper steps towards getting your mind right, getting your body right, getting your spirit right. The heart and soul of a champion. You can't be defeated. So rise to your feet and overcome it.